Welcome back to my channel. I'm Jens from Western Australia and yeah, we're back at the next stage of the ground pond. I'm doing the rendering or plastering of the the pond, the inside and out. And yeah, I'll just show you a bit um, how I do it. And I'm not an expert, so don't don't take this for word. Just I just want to show you what I'm up to. Um, I'm not making any lessons in this because I'm truly not an expert in this. And uh, like I said, we've got brick layers, the same for plasterers. I take my hat up to them. It It is a, a skill you have to learn over years. You don't learn that over like, a day or something. I mean, I, I had a good, a really good teacher with my friend Neil when we were doing the, the swimming pool. Uh, he showed me a lot of tricks and gave me tips about it, but yeah, it only goes that far. You, you don't, you take a lot in, but it's, you, you're not, you're not an expert after, you know, watching an expert doing it and explaining it how to do it. So I just do an okay job. Let's say it this way, and I'm happy with it. You know, if I wanted to. Um, top-notch job or you know first class i would get someone to do it but i enjoy the, the challenge and i enjoy enjoy doing diy so i'll turn you around and show you what i'm up to so we're back as you can see i already started uh, i did the first mix of plaster or render and uh, just to, to trial it and i discovered i uh, used a bit too much of the plaster mix it went off pretty quick so the next one is a bit lighter and should be much much better workable for for the job so i just put you uh, on the tripod and just give you show you a bit of what i'm doing give me a second okay because it's so hot I'll just give the all a slight misting just give not much don't have to drench it but we have a really hot day today and i just don't want the, the pasta falls off or doesn't adhere to it So much easier to get into this pond when the window wasn't didn't have the frame. Oh. A little bit of exercise and gymnastic. Okay, I've got the mix. As you can see, I, I started at the top. This is how my my friend taught me. You do it, start at the top and then work your way down. And then you just skim it on. Go down. Yeah. But yeah, I can see this. If that mix was had too much plaster mix in there, I'll cement what I thought. new one is yeah it's much better to work with but yeah as I said I'm not an expert well, I'll give everything you go as you we have seen on my channel so far I'm not afraid to just try something new When I was watching my friend doing it, he does it with so much ease. Ah, he's a bricklayer and has 
learned that all of the years. These. Oh well, no, 30, 35 years in the trade. Okay, that's it. Come back to you when um, let's say you got this part done. Oh dear me. Now I stuffed something up. I just discovered it. My returns here, while I'm here rendering or plastering the walls, I totally forgot that I have to put the flanges on the return so that they are flush with the, with the plaster and then I can fiberglass on top of that PVC. So now I hope this plaster that I did this morning is still fresh enough that I can chisel in and put these these flanges, flanges on top. So, yeah. A little stuff up on my side, just to share this. Not everything is smooth sailing in my pond build. It's never been, it will never be, I guess. Okay, that was just a little update for me here quick. Come back to you when I'll put them in and I'm finished with the plastering. Bye for now. So we're back, the pond is rendered, I'm pretty happy with the outcome, I mean it was a it was a hard job and I do appreciate the tradespeople they do it, I take my hat off for them or to them and what they do because um, it's a real hard, hard job. So yeah, it's got all all rendered, everything, all the way around, inside, outside. We got the floor inside this morning done. And put a little slope in there so to clean it better. And um, we've got pipe for the trickle in here. And there's a pipe for a slow over overflow, a little overflow. And it's all integrated in this con massive concrete block. So when I put the pipes in the other day, I literally put formwork up here and I filled everything with solid concrete. So I just thought, make it a bit easier on myself. Instead of doing rendering into this corner and all this and then having still dramas with the pipes, so I thought, why not encase all these pipes in a solid block of concrete and basically catch two flies with one hit, have the pipes disappeared in the concrete, solid anchored in, plus have another concrete, the concrete here to support this corner, to give a bit more strength, so yeah. This is my idea behind it. But I only just came up with it when I was putting these pipes and I was for a couple of days thinking where do I put the trickle in and where do I put the the overflow. So I wanted an overflow in in the pond, a little one, because I made the mistake on my main pond where I didn't plan that one in. So I planned it in here. It might be a bit small, but it's only supposed to trickle it slowly out while the trickle in is here. And I wanted to trickle in in the filter box. So yeah, over there, I have the pipe installed for the air curtain. You can see the two returns from the planter trough. And yeah, that is all nicely. Oops. Sorry for that. It's nicely rendered. I put a, what's it called? Floor level I mix in to get the floor nice and smooth. I got the, the, the big pipe that comes out of the bioreactor. And then of course the other pipe that goes into the bioreactor from the skimmer. So that's all in. And yeah, basically it's all ready for for the fiberglassing. So that will be my next job, but I will come back to you when I'm doing that. 
So yeah, there's the skimmer. I decided for one of those skimmers. Well, we'll see, time will tell if that is a good skimmer or not. I don't anticipate mm, a lot of leaves in this pond because it's above the ground. It's it's a bit covered by the roof here. So, and yeah, most of the trees are a bit further away and that is an orange tree that doesn't really drop many leaves. And when it, if it drops, it's all below the canopy. So, yeah. Oh, I'll see. If it's not working, I always can change it to a different one. I still have a, one of the floating skimmer from o Oaza. Um, of that, uh, but I didn't. I didn't put, want to put that one in because it's quite bulky, and I didn't want anything huge in this pond because it's not a not a massive pond. However, now where this is finished, I'll zoom a bit out. Now where this is finished. It is quite, quite big. I it wasn't actually, I didn't think it would be, become that big. It was supposed to be a bit more smaller. But yeah, it's still small enough to, to show, um, especially Aussies here, that they can have a nice koi pond in their little courtyard. It's a big drama here, especially with new suburbs. The courtyard is—it's a courtyard. They—they—they they, they get an alfresco in, and a little bit of garden space. They're lucky. So, with with the court side or the, the the backyard court area they get now, this would be still fit in into one of the those areas. And if you don't like a brush filter, you you can make it. Of course, it can go with a drum filter or a Nexus. But I think a Nexus will probably take the same space away as the brush filter biorec that I I planned in there. So the only smaller area will be a, a a drum filter. You know, a, co a compact drum filter with a bio unit in 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 integrated. Okay, that's enough for me waffling around about um, what you could have and couldn't have. I'm quite happy with my workmanship. It is not perfect and all that. So if any of you are bricklayers or plaster experts, don't look too close at this this work. But for someone who isn't doing that for a living, I'm pretty happy with the outcome. To be honest yeah so that's for me now a quick show you the coys the pond they're doing really fine the coys here sorry for the glare but you know that they, they, they're doing really really good i'm happy with the water the water clarity um so yeah no it's doing fantastic um, I put a little papyrus uh, floater plant in there. There's another plant that that I bought the other day from one of the shops here. Yeah. But that is not supposed to go in there. That's at the moment only there because uh, to get a bit um, moisture. I got a floating ring for it for the temporary. Put it temporarily in there um, because uh, it doesn't like at the moment because it comes from a shop where it had artificial lighting it, it's a bit sensitive on the harsh sun out here so i put it into the shade there so yeah they're doing all well the fish um waterfall is working really really good and yeah probably next week after i've done the fiberglassing and i'm almost finished with the the grow on pond i'll attack this little project of mine and put the planter trough up there and then get all these pipe work and hose yeah buried in and hidden away oh um, let's and oh yeah just have a little quick update or look at the the little 
koi baby from the spawning. Oh, he's a bit shy. He's shy. Let's see if we can zoom in and get him. There he is. I called him Black Eye. Um, simple reason for that. He, both of his eyes have black wings zooming around it. So yeah, he's doing really well and he's eating quite a lot. He's Comes, he's all in this little area with the water lilies, so he's quite, he's, he's feeling very secure in this area from the big fish over there. But he's swimming out in and out through this gap here, and he's venturing out quite a bit lately. So he's going even almost here to the more in the middle there, but here's yeah, soon the big. The big fish come, big coys, he disappears again. Okay, that's from here. Hope you're all doing well, and I hope you en yeah, enjoyed and liked the, the little update on the uh, Grand Pond with the vendor. I will come back to you when I'm starting the fiberglassing. For, no for now, enjoy your hobby, and see you next time. Thanks for watching. Bye.